Disc brakes are here to stay, and whilst the pads do last quite some time, they will eventually need replacing. So today, let's look at exactly how to do it, so when the time comes, it's a nice and simple job. Now generally, you're going to want to replace your disc brake pads. I mean, there's about one and a half millimeters or two business cards worth of compound left on the actual backing plate of them. Admittedly, that is quite difficult to measure exactly and so precisely, but for the small cost of a new set of pads, it's certainly worth airing on the safe side of caution when it comes to replacing them. Now, something also worth considering here is the huge variety of different pads that are available out there. They come in all different shapes and sizes, is, but you do need the correct ones for your caliper. There's no such thing as a one size fits all when it comes to this. So sometimes you're lucky and on the back of your pad you will have a serial number or a part number, but if you don't, just have a look around online and try and find the same shape and also make sure it matches up with your caliper. If in doubt though, go into your local bike shop and they'll be able to help you out with that exact pad that's required. Also, something worth considering too is having a look on the actual rotor itself Itself and checking if they are designed for a certain compound of disc brake pad. If they are, make sure you stick to that for ultimate braking performance. The process of removing and replacing the pads is actually a pretty simple one, which is great news, providing you keep on top of your maintenance as well as using decent tools. The reason I say this is because the little bolts that tend to actually keep the pads in place down there, well, they're open to the elements, of course, and the actual Allen key heads on them are pretty small. So when it comes to releasing one, if you've got a little bit of corrosion which has happened inside of there, that can be a real pain in the backside, believe me. So something I would always recommend is periodically just remove the actual little bolt and apply just a dab of grease on there before refitting it. Of course, making sure that you avoid the pad and the rotor in the process, but a little bit of care here and there will make the job much easier along the line. The first thing we're going to want to do is to remove the wheel. Now the same principle applies to both front and rear, but today, well, we're gonna do the front one. So simply remove it, and of course, it really does help if actually you use a pair of gloves like this. That way, any natural greases that are actually inside of the palm of your hand or fingertips don't contaminate the brake pads or disc rotor, which of course can lead to the horrible shrieking noise as well as bad performance. Now we've got the wheel and the rotor out of the way, we can actually inspect a lot closer the actual uh, mechanics, if you like, behind how the pads are attached inside of the caliper. So in this case, we've got a pin which is attached via the caliper here on the inside and a little hex socket, which then goes through the pads and then threads into the opposite side of the caliper. There's also a tiny little clip on here too, which you are going to need to remove. Of course, not every system is the same, but largely, as long as you've got everything out of the way, you can actually inspect and see how it is. It's very, very logical and very simple in most cases. So the first thing we're gonna to want to do is actually remove this tiny little clip here. Helps have a little pair of pliers, so we can just pop that out. And then, with our Allen key, we can simply unscrew in the standard direction and release the locking pin. Keep it somewhere safe. Now depending on the caliper type depends on the way in which the pads are removed from it. Whatever you do, do not use force because you will not need to use any force at all to remove them. Check again to make sure there's no springs or little clips that are holding them in place. Generally though, these days, most of them are nice and simple slide in and slide out methods. So in the case of these ones here on this SRAM group set, I'm gonna get myself some needle nose pliers and I can just slide them backwards and out. Now, the reason I can easily identify the direction in which to do it is there is a tiny little lip here on the rear of the actual backing plate of the pad, which sits against the inside of the caliper. So it's worth spending just a little bit of time before you try and force it out in the wrong direction. And simply, when you've got them out, well, if they're no good, you can just dispose of them. But Always keep hold of these little springs if you've got them because you never know when you're gonna need them again. Now that the brake pads are out of the caliper, what we're going to need to do is actually push the self-adjusting pistons back into the caliper itself. 
The reason being, those pistons have actually been gradually getting closer and closer to the central line in order to make up for the lack of compound that were on the disc brake pads that we've just removed. So by putting in fresh ones, of course, we need that extra space again. So grab something like a tire lever and actually push them back into position inside of the caliper like so. Make sure you don't use anything sharp, which could damage any of the components. Fitting the pads is simply the reverse of the removal process. So first up, we are going to put the pads into position. They go in there nice and easy. And then we're gonna to want to put that locking pin in place there too. Important, of course, to remember not to over tighten this because that could lead to problems further down the line. If in doubt, do check your manufacturer's manual. And then the final bit is a quite often fiddly little clip here. Now the reason for this is a kind of fail safe. So if the pin was to rattle loose somehow, this little clip does in fact keep it in position. So don't forget to use it. And then finally, we're going to want to refit the wheel before giving the brake lever a few pumps to make sure that the pistons are coming out of the caliper okay and are actually self-centering with the rotor. And then before you go out riding, actually bed those pads into the rotor. So I would suggest riding down the road a few times, about 15 miles an hour, and slow as quickly as possible, but without actually locking the brakes on, of course, then repeating that process a few times, and then do it just a little bit faster too, just to make sure that the pads are all okay. There we are, new disc brake pads fitted into your calipers. Now, if you've got any suggestions for Maintenance Monday videos, make sure you leave them down there in the comments section below. And also don't forget to, to like and share this video with your friends. Give it a big old thumbs up there. And don't forget to check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. And now for another video about disc brakes and five disc brakes maintenance tips, how about clicking, well, just down here.